Hello, in this video we are going to cover asset creation using our multi-device 2.0 philosophy. So it covers iOS and Android and literally any other device out there, basically all the different common ratios. Quickly, I'm just going to tell you what we covered in the background creation series and what it was. Anything that's important in your background, put it within this yellow rectangle because that is the smallest rectangle and for reference that is the iPhone 4 and below rectangle aka 2x3 or 3x2 depending on whether you landscape and portrait this series I mean actually this video I mean is applicable for landscape as well it's exactly the same principle I'm just doing it on portrait and for the background make sure you have it extended outwards but just make it an extension of what's in the middle just wanted to quickly cover that because designing assets has a very similar philosophy as well for starters you'll want to design them basically so they fit this sort of canvas size in general so you don't want to be creating them at let's say thousand pixels by a thousand pixels though theoretically that could fit in most of these sizes but if it's just a small item unless you're resizing it you're going to want to be making them smaller and what i've done is created a good example of how to create and more specifically lay out assets and a bad example here is the good example so as you can see if we were to let's say enable the background on every single device type we would be able to see the background the important aspects of the background and more importantly every single object on the screen so that looks fantastic but if I show you the bad version this does not look very good because there is actually no device size that can actually show every single asset because even if you look at the iPad one some of the bricks from the top row are missing or actually all the bricks from the top row are missing if you look at the green one the brick or about a quarter of the green brick on the left is missing so this is not what we want at all because you might have a temptation let me just disable this a second and this to create it so it fits let's say the green the blue or the red or the entire canvas but the problem with that is if you create a screen that looks great on that and especially one that doesn't have a lot of room so you can't reposition items on a smaller device you're basically buggered on a smaller device like the iPhone 4 so as a result we recommend when you create assets and actually like they're more specifically designing your level on your game make sure it all fits within the yellow screen size and you might be thinking how about this pad right here it's basically towards the bottom of the uh, let's get rid of this oops lazy uh, keep clicking there this yellow paddle is towards the bottom of the yellow rectangle which is iPhone 4 and that's what I want in my game but there's quite a big gap between where the paddle is and where the blue rectangle is and the green rectangle and it's sort of an issue with the red rectangle so I might be thinking that's discrepancies because different devices will have different heights one it actually doesn't really matter because chances of a user let's say having five or six different devices and comparing them and even then once they've noticed it if they did notice it if they actually had access to that many devices and saying that's bad is unlikely on top of that we're going to have a separate video which is actually going to cover creating an example scene aka using code so you can position let's say the paddle so it's always at the bottom regardless of the screen height you can let's say position these so they're always maybe in the middle or maybe they're always 75 percent of the way up so that way it all looks uniform and that's the same principle for example if we had some hood elements so we might have a score element here a pause button right here and on the yellow if we had them right here it would look fantastic but on the blue and the green 
We're not so good because there'll be a massive gap. But again, because we're going to be using dynamic code, we're not going to use magic numbers in our code. They'll always be at the top and they'll always be wherever we want them relative to the screen that the user is playing their game, your game on. So as a result, all of this will be fixed basically in code. So we're going to have a separate video for that. Check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php. There is a lot to take in in this video and in this series in general, but do persevere. And if you do have an issue, like I said, just feel free to ask any question you may have. Please rate, comment and subscribe as it really does help us understand what you like and obviously what you don't like about the videos. Also, there's one further link in the description, which will be a link to the source code from all the videos in this series that actually have source code. Plus, you'll have the landscape and portrait multi-res template Photoshop files. We'll also put these Photoshop files in as well, so you can see an example of a bad asset layout and a good asset layout. As usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.